guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at another quiet carry model. This time it's going to be the Drift. Now these are about $300 at full retail. Depends on where you're shopping as to how much you're going to spend. But there's something funny about quiet carry. It's a brand that has constantly piqued my interest. And I look at some of the images, and I go, man, that is a really cool-looking knife. But then I get one in my hands, and I'm somewhat underwhelmed. But funny thing is, I don't dislike or hate the knives. They just don't seem to live up to maybe what my expectations are of them from seeing the images. And from hearing what other people have to say about them. Because if you go out there and really look, see what other people are saying when they review a quiet carry knife, and they're damn near jizzing their pants over them, and I just, I don't get it, I don't see it, I don't feel it about any of them yet. And I'm fortunate today that I have a few of these in my hands to be able to play with and make some comparisons. So I've got the Drift, I have the IQ, and I have the 9. And these were sent in by a very generous viewer of mine. Thank you so very much. His name is Don. Well, I won't put his last name up out of respect because I haven't discussed that with him yet. But dude, thank you so much because without him, I would have never had the opportunity to play with so many of these. He was also the fine gentleman that helped me out with the IQL that I reviewed a few months back. So when he got more in his collection, he's like, hey, I've got a few more of these. Do you want to check out more? And I'm like, yeah, I find the brand to be very fascinating, so I want to check it out. So as far as the drift goes, it is easily the most recognizable and popular model made by the brand. Now, last year, the 9 really got a lot of hype. So if you were just searching YouTube for Quiet Carry, the 9 will probably pop up as much or more so than the Drift, just because it was such a popular model last year. And yes, as I mentioned before, I am going to get to a review on that one as well. Now, the drift is smaller than you think it is. It photographs larger, I think, because of its great white shark kind of shape that it has. Now, for $300, I think we really need to dig in and really look at this one because a lot of people are not going to be able to justify that kind of money for this knife once they've put it in their hands if they don't know a lot more about it. And I say that because it's very skinny, it's very slim, it's very lightweight, and it's got very thin blade stock. And a lot of people are going to say, well, it feels kind of cheap. And I honestly wouldn't disagree with them on it feels kind of cheap. However, that's a perception based on the wrong factors. Oh, it feels light and delicate. Oh, it's so skinny that it feels wimpy. Okay, but being lightweight is what most people want in an EDC knife. They want it easy to carry, and to have it with them all day, every day, just in case they might need to cut something, that's what it's for. It's not a hard-use knife. Now, you own some beefier, more substantial knives, but you carry those more on a day when you may have a specific task in mind. Let's say it's a, a Chavez scapegoat or Chavez 229. You know, okay, today I'm much more likely to have to really cut down a, a bunch of cardboard or do a lot of uh, maybe hard-use cutting of some sort you don't burden yourself daily with a large and heavy knife unless you're one of those few people that simply chooses only to carry big, heavy knives out of preference. And yes, those absolutely do exist. Just like there are guys that will only carry a little Glock 43 
and there are other guys that are going to carry a Glock 17. They like carrying that larger gun. They like carrying that beefier, what may, they may feel is more substantial for any number of reasons. So they have acclimated to that, and they understand it's not going to be as easy to carry as that other smaller one is, but it's what I want, so that's it. This is a compromised design. You generally have to trade off some things in order to gain other benefits when you're talking EDC. So here, it feels delicate, and beyond just feeling delicate, I am absolutely sure, let me zoom in on this as I make this point, I am absolutely sure that that thin little finger choil right there is going to cut you if you're doing any kind of hardcore cutting for any length of time. And the thinness of the blade stock means a thin and uncomfortable spine too. So once again, hard use cutting is not going to be fun at all with this knife. However, that thin blade is ground down even thinner, making this a really good slicer. This is going to be a really, really good slicer. It's going to be good for, you know, cutting into boxes and cutting down cardboard and, and things of that nature. And because the entire blade isn't very thick, it's not going to build up a lot cutting through thicker materials. You could have a bit of a challenge if you had a very thick blade, and especially with a, a, a flat ground blade like this, if it's very thick, it's going to get harder and harder and harder to push through a thicker material like cardboard the further you get into it. This, you don't have that worry. And a huge benefit for this knife is that regardless of the size, it's got a fantastic blade material choice. This is the Vanex Super Clean. Let me get a little close up on that as well. There it is. It is marked Vanex. And that makes this knife completely impervious to rust or corrosion. This could be the perfect boater's knife. You're out there on the boat, you're doing some fishing, and you know, you're just going to be you know, cutting some fishing line, you're going to be uh, prepping the bait, and then maybe you're going to be cleaning some fish afterwards. This is that knife. It could be in and out of the salt water. It's not going to bother it. It could do all of those things that you want it to do in that wet environment. And you don't really have to worry about it. I would still suggest always to rinse off your knife with clean, fresh water after that. Because you could also get the deposits up into the pivot. The salt can build up in there and make it feel kind of, you know, gritty and grimy and, and mess up that beautiful smooth action. Nothing inside of this knife can rust. Bearings? Nope, it doesn't have any bearings. Phosphor bronze washers, a classic. Lock bar insert? Well, that's LC200N, which is also incredibly corrosion resistant. You could say corrosion proof and not be wrong. The detent? Nope, it's ceramic. That can't rust either. So you're all good. About the only thing that could corrode on this knife is the pocket clip. It's listed as a marine-grade stainless steel on Quiet Carry's website, which is actually a 316 stainless. But all stainless steels can rust in the right conditions. The thing with 316 is it won't pit on the surface like a lot of other stainless steels will. So it's, it's a good anti-corrosive steel, but it's not completely rust-proof. Another good thing is it's also anti-magnetic, which goes along with the properties of the titanium for the frame as well. So all around, the material choices on this were really fantastic. This is a premium-grade knife just simply based off of the materials. Now, let's get into the specs, and then we can dive deeper into the good and the bad on this knife. 
So let's move this over there and make room over here for the specs. I'm not going to keep them up on the screen forever, so you can pause the video if you need to read through this. So you've got a titanium frame lock, and uh, this option, as, as it sits right here, is listed by them as SWSA, which stands for Stonewash Frame and Satin Blade. They have a uh, SWSW, so Stonewashed Frame, Stonewash Blade, so on and so forth. Your overall length is 6.94 inches. Your blade length is 2.98 inches, so yes, so just a tick under three inches. So yeah, it's a little bit small. See, I told you it, it is smaller than it appears to be. It looks like a much larger knife. Your blade stock thickness is 0 0.090. So yeah, yeah, that's thin, baby. That's thin. Handle length is 3.94 inches and it is a drop point with a flat grind on Vanax Super Clean. You have a T8 titanium pivot. And the weight on this is 2.6 ounces. So yeah, man, it is, it is so lightweight, so easy to carry. Now, let's talk about the pros and the cons, where it rocks. The Vanax Super Clean Blade, excellent high-grade choice. It's not going to rust. It's going to hold an edge for a really, really, really long time. It's got great wear resistance. And having that stonewashed polish, I'm sorry, not stonewashed, the satin finish on there. I'm confusing it, I'm sorry, with uh, the nine that I have here that I was playing with just before I started this video. This uh, the satin finish is clean looking. It looks really, really good. It's a titanium frame lock, so it's lightweight, it's strong, it's a nice modern look with nice modern materials. The action. For me, the action, oh, it's fantastic. Now, I know that a lot of times we get carried away with bearing knives and their whole drop shutty action and all that. A knife doesn't need to be drop shutty to be smooth and to feel premium. All drop shut does is provide us a way to demonstrate to you through a camera how smooth the action is. That's it. You can't tell how smooth this one is by me sitting here and opening and closing it. But let me tell you, right now, it is it is very, very smooth. As a matter of fact, it's a lot like a Sabenza, but just a little slicker. Take a Sabenza, loosen the pivot just a hair, and that's what this is going to feel like. Another thing that rocks is the flat-faced hardware style on the presentation side. I really, really like that. It's a wonderful choice for aesthetics. It's almost as good as not having any exposed hardware at all. I really like that look a lot. It doesn't look bad from the back either, but yeah, I like that look a lot. And it feels good as well. There's no proud hardware that you can feel sticking up into your hand. Now, where it sucks, or just where it falls a little bit short, not only is the blade stock too thin and dainty, but so is the titanium frame. Now, that's fine for somebody that has smaller hands. That's great, and I'm not knocking anybody that does. But for bigger, larger, you know, man hands... This knife is going to feel like it's going to uh, twist or torque or even slip out of their grip under hard use. So again, for its purpose, this is very clearly meant to be an EDC knife. As an EDC knife, it's fine. It's not a hard use knife. If, if you are going to use this for any serious or long term, like I'm going to spend two hours cutting uh, down, you know, stuff from the yard. I, I got some uh, branches out of the trees and I've got to cut some down or whatever. This is not the knife that you're going to use for that. And you know that. And I don't believe that's what it was designed for. I think for what it was designed for as an EDC knife to carry often and just to have with you, in case you have something random that pops up that needs to be cut, this is a good choice. 
that 2.6 ounce weight also benefits it for, uh, for, for daily carry as well. All right. The pocket clip. Let's, let's talk about this. This is not just an area where it falls a little short. This pocket clip sucks. It is a sin to see a bent uh, uh, paper clip style steel clip on here, particularly being stainless steel. It should be titanium and it should be a milled clip for $300. Now, if this were a budget knife, sure, cut that corner, but this isn't a budget knife by most people's standards. For me, with the way that I have purchased and collected knives over the years, I consider $300 to be a very, very, very inexpensive knife. But for a lot of people, they're going to be saving up to spend $300 on a knife. And they want it to feel as premium as that price dictates to them in their heads. So I think that that was, it was just the wrong choice. Now, I've gotten to where I don't fully hate paperclip style pocket clips. A lot of knives that I've gotten in the past year, especially the ones from Devo Knives, have had the paperclip style clips, and I've really come to like them, and they're very practical, and they clip in the pocket very, very well. Utilitarian-wise, utility-wise, I should say, they're great. They work very, very, very well. But you don't get a pass at this price point. At 250 or so, sure. $300, no. And that seems like kind of a hard line of definition. And I don't know why that number just really sticks to me. At $300, no way. I would even say if this was, it's as dumb as it sounds, 275 I'd probably be okay with that kind of clip. But there's something about hearing $300 that makes you think of a certain level of knife, perhaps. And that clip ain't it. And the other thing is, as I mentioned before, that finger choil, it's just, it's way too sharp. So you've got harsh edges on here and it's too thin because of how thin the, uh, the blade steel is. So that combination, not great. Makes for a very sharp combo. And I just wish it weren't like that. And the choice to stonewash the frame was a slight misstep. Sure, it looks good, and uh, it's going to help to hide some daily carry marks. I personally don't think it looks good, uh, but a lot of people will like it for sure. But it, it will certainly hide a few of the daily carry marks, and that's great. The problem is... If this were a bead blasted titanium, that the texture to it would have helped it feel more secure in the hand. As it is, it's very, very slick, bordering on downright slippery. Again, it's not meant to be a hard use knife, so that may not even be a factor for you. It may not even matter to you. For me, I don't know. It just feels like every time I go to flick it open, I'm going to somehow drop this onto my foot. And it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. Now, the choice of Vanex, in fact, makes up for these shortcomings. And that means this would be an excellent ED style knife for my needs. Uh, would I carry it? Yes, absolutely. Would it be one of my favorites in my collection? I don't think so, because I have a lot of really, really, really great knives that I thoroughly love and enjoy, and they make it, certain knives make it into my regular rotation, and other knives that I own, as much as I love them, still don't make it into the regular rotation for any number of reasons, and some of those reasons may have been the same reasons I named off on this knife. But to have in my collection and carry on the occasion, yes, I absolutely would. And I still think it's a good-looking design. Still, somehow, I think it looks better in pictures than it does in real life. And I really, I cannot put my finger on it. I can't put it into words to, to, to really properly express it to you, unfortunately. But... It's just not as impressive in person 
as it is in pictures or even how it, how it presents itself on video when I've watched other people's videos. So it's a cool knife and it's got a lot of pros, but it's not something that I feel that I just can't live without. So your feelings may differ on that. And if you've got one, please sound off down below and let me know how you think. I mean, don't be rude about it. Don't be like, you're a dick. And what do you mean it's too thin and it's too this and too that? I've tried to look at every angle on this, on everything that I liked and didn't like, and tried to play devil's advocate on everything. And some of it's personal preference and some of it's common sense that a lot of people are going to share the same sentiments. So just be nice <laughs> if you, and voice your opinion. If, if you love your knife, tell me why you love it. And if some of the things that I really hated don't really bother you when you're using yours or carrying yours, feel free to let people know. Because what I don't want people to do is to see this video and go, Jim hates this knife and Jim hates this brand. That is completely untrue. I like the brand. I'm just not sold on them completely. I like the knife. I'm just not overwhelmed by it. I'm whelmed. I guess is the best way to put it. Anyway, I am going to come back very shortly here with these other two videos. So stay tuned for those. If you're not subscribed yet, man, what's your problem? Get down there and subscribe and check out the next two I do in this series. I'm excited to do them. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me as always. I know you have a choice in the plethora of knife tubers that exist these days. And I'm glad that you choose to keep coming back and watching my silly little videos. I'll see you guys next time.